is uh, the DJ at a classical music station. <laughs> That's a sweet gig. Here's Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. I'll be back in an hour and a half. <laughs> Thursday, we're doing triple shots of Mahler. So I don't need to be here. <laughs> Think toughest jobs on the planet? Customer service jobs. Yeah, I know. There's, a, there's always a few who agree. It is. doesn't have to be, but the customer is always right. Or so they have been led to believe. <laughs> when they're not. Customers are always bitchy. Customers get bitchy in the travel business, that's for sure. I've seen it. I've seen it so many times. I was sitting on an airplane once, and they, they made this little announcement. Our flight's going to be delayed because we have a mechanical problem. Uh, we're looking to do it. We'll keep you posted. Shouldn't be long. This woman next to me goes, God damn it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Think about what she's saying. God damn it. I hate it when they find the problems before the plane takes off. <laughs> Why can't they find them later when we're burning down the ball things? <laughs> she pointed at the pilot. So then this guy comes on. He's late, by the way. He made the connection because the flight was delayed, and he's all huffy and puffy looking for a pillow. Can't find one. Gets all pissed off. Where's my pillow? You better find me a pillow, or I will have. I will get your name and write a letter to the. <laughs> and then does that thing that they like. He's our leader, or something. Turns to the rest of us. <laughs> Suddenly he's miming in the twenties. We're all sitting there with our pillows. <laughs> so uh, where did the letter thing come from? Writing a letter about a pillow? How emasculating is that? You know, uh, Lewis and Clark crossed the country twice, took three years. They kept a journal. Nowhere is there a complaint like, Dear President Jefferson, this tour you sent us on is bullshit. The river always flows the wrong direction. Our food runs away. Our tour guide is pregnant, for heaven's sakes. I didn't get a pillow and my neck hurts. <laughs> I'm just saying, you, you complain too much, you force customer service people to lie to you, which is, you know, like, yeah. I, if I was the pilot on an airplane, I'd just make stuff up to make people glad we weren't leaving, you know? Folks, we just realized the wing is not bolted on. Some guy in the plane, oh, bolt it on, I know how to fix the wing. <laughs> or maybe something they can relate to, you know. Uh, folks, we just found a puppy in the engine. A six week old golden retriever puppy. Now we can leave on time, but you know, as soon as we fire up that GE, that puppy will fly out the back at 800 miles an hour. Hit the terminal like a paint pellet. <laughs> or we could take a few minutes and get him out. You know, get some kind of big engineering suit, go up there, pretend to pull a puppy out. <gasps> the puppy. Everybody on the plane to be writing letters. This is the best airline we've ever flown on. No puppies were killed. Worst job in the world is the lost luggage guy. That job. Because that's one of those customer service jobs you don't get to start your job until someone gets really pissed off. <laughs> I've seen people snap like Hitler on D-Day. My luggage is off and Uden put in back and luggage lost in office. <laughs> that's why I think customer service people should have a setup, not like a desk, but like the Wizard of Oz so they can fight back to the angry people who deserve it. <laughs> you know, like, where's the lost luggage person? I need to find my luggage. It's right through that door. <laughs> All right, excuse me, excuse me. <gasps> Speak when you're spoken to. <laughs> Your insolence has become tiresome. <laughs> Yes. Um, I 
think my luggage was lost. It was not lost! <laughs> you don't deserve it yet. Now go apologize to that boy at Taco Bell you were such a dick to. <laughs> then you shall get your bag. Okay. <laughs> Apparently I have issues with authority. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs>